right, what's up you guys, Sedona? So I wanted to talk to you guys about my first week on the job as an official OBPA. Um, so that's what this video is about. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned because the video is gonna start in one second. What's up you guys, it's Sedona. Welcome back to my channel. So as I told you guys last week, I had some big news to share. I'm officially, like primarily, an OBGYN PA. Um, specifically, I work inpatient, so just transitioned from being a trauma PA at my hospital to being an OBGYN PA primarily. So what do I mean by primarily? I still have my delegation agreement with trauma, so I can still pick up trauma shifts, which I intend on doing. I actually did some shifts early in the month of October um, because I want to keep my skills because I've learned so much on trauma. And I think that it's important for you guys to understand like the flexibility uh, that you have when you are a PA, and especially a PA in a particular hospital system. So I'll still be picking up trauma shifts I'll still be you know doing my chest tubes and lines and you know keeping those skills but at the same time catching babies and holding them little babies and smelling their little baby smells I'm so excited you guys and so I wanted to talk to you guys about my first week as an OBGYN PA so I officially started last week like on my own as a big girl OBPA uh, and it's been pretty cool. Um, I'm getting to learn, you know, my nurses and they're cool and nice and I miss my trauma nurses but I still go down there and like check in on them and see how they're doing. Uh, but I'm getting to learn the OB nurses and, um, you know, my scrub techs and things like that because the the labor and delivery mother baby floor is like pretty much a closed floor. So the same people work in in the various different areas. So you'll have like the same nurses coming, just like how you kind of have the same nurses on like the med surge units. You the same nurses on that floor. And then we have our own OR. Um, we have two ORs uh, on that floor. So the same like scrub tech, and circulator nurses and things like that work you know on various different days they just switch out shifts so we get to kind of like learn them and hopefully you know become like a little family you know so hopefully they like me as much as I like them you know and it's a good relationship <laughs> something like that but uh, you'll get to learn them and know them and so it's cool like just kind of getting to learn everybody and and also like the attending so I do a lot of c-sections and then gyn surgeries uh that's mainly what the obpas do and then we also field a lot of the really all of the consults and so um with that being said i still get to see like trauma in ob but specifically ob related trauma right so if somebody come in and came in and they were in a motor vehicle accident but they're pregnant um they'll call like an ob stat from the trauma bay and will come down and assess like fetal movement, the ba the mom, um, and then the trauma team will have to clear like the mother from a trauma standpoint and then we'll take her up to the OB floor. So I haven't seen that as an OB PA, but I've done that as a trauma PA. So I don't really foresee it being too significantly different, obviously, but um, it's, it's gonna be interesting when that happens. Actually, I did see it once. There was an OB stat and we like delivered the baby in the ED, which was crazy. Um, but yeah, so that was one thing. She's like, oh my gosh, I feel like coming. And then the baby was like there. So um, that was actually pretty cool. Um, but she was an OB stat, not from a trauma standpoint. So that's one thing that I haven't seen from the OBGYN side. Uh, my day starts off a little bit later than it did with trauma. So I start off around like eight o'clock in terms of like sign out, table rounds with the attendings. Uh, and then I go and I round on my patients after table rounds because there are gonna be patients that may wanna leave early. Um, there are gonna be patients that we've been managing like blood pressures for because something that we're like always looking for and like trying to be acutely aware of is like preeclampsia, um, after birth, um, and you know, also like antepartum. So postpartum and antepartum like preeclampsia is like a thing, right? Like hyper, you know, extreme hypertension. And so we look at all of those, we're monitoring like blood pressures and things like that. So that's something that we're always like very acutely aware of. So I wanna go around on my patients. And then from there we have like another round 
because we want to see like, okay, who's laboring, who may need surgery, who's coming in for a scheduled surgery. Those are all things that I need to be aware of because, you know, my services might be needed at that time. Um, and then from that, it's really just kind of like going through your day-to-day -day stuff, like you're writing notes and then fielding consults. And so it's pretty much very similar to trauma in that you have to round on your patients on the floor. You have to like follow up with like dressing changes and those various different things, you know, monitoring um, H and H's and labs and making sure that everybody's like doing well um, on a on a daily basis and preparing people for discharge. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you're you're in surgery a little bit more than you are on the trauma team because with trauma we were a heavily ran resident I would say specialty and so they were in all of like the daytime surgeries and those surgeries are in the main OR so there are lots of like first assists down there um, helping them out as well so from a trauma PA standpoint we didn't really go to the OR that often unless it was at night um, when we didn't have um, a resident or you know um, we had a lot of traumas or something like that so that was like something that I've noticed that's a little bit different but at the same time there are so many similarities so I I'm not really missing a step at all and I'm getting like all of like the cute babies one thing that is definitely different is um, you know like your your clientele or your, like your the patients that you're seeing so a lot of the patients that I'm seeing are, are pretty much like healthy you know and so for the most part like they're very much ready to leave and they're not spending a significant amount of time um, with our service like they did on trauma. So I would have patients that I saw in trauma like for months, you know, weeks on hand um, because there are various different barriers to like throughput and, and discharge from like ED to home. Uh, but with my OBPA is like, um, with my OB patients, they come in and it's like, all right, cool. I'm here, I have my baby, um, I'm postpartum day one, and then on postpartum day two, you go home. Or I'm post-op day two, and on post-op day three, they go home. And some people, like, actually, like, if they're doing well, their pain is controlled, they're feeling good, like, they get to go home on, like, postpartum day one or post-op day two. Um, so it's pretty interesting. It's nice, like, seeing the various different like, dynamics. Like, I will try to give you guys, like, a you know, day in the life kind of follow through from like start to finish on what I do because I still do 24 hour shifts, which again, I love. Um, and so uh, that is very, 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 very beneficial to me and my life and uh, the lifestyle that I've grown accustomed to with like my family and stuff. So um, just being able to spend time with family, but yet still get that, that healthcare bug fixed um, is really, really, good and so i just want to like talk to you guys about that and just show you guys that there is a space for you guys in healthcare in various different capacities depending on where you want to be look at me i'm both trauma and ob i can feel, fulfill both of those desires at the same time while um you know taking care of my mental health and my mental self as well and that's something that you all can do as well but specifically in this profession um if there are areas that you're interested in and you know you want to kind of get a break from something but still hold on to it there is a space for you so hopefully this video was a little bit enlightening i will um put out a video about my last trauma shift um i made a video about that i just haven't edited it yet so i will do that for you guys and then i will work on getting Getting you a video of a day in the life of an OBPA who is me <laughs> um, and we'll see uh, all the things that I hopefully can be able to show you guys um, and then I'm gonna be doing a little bit more education on like OB related or women's health related things because uh, I've seen a lot already just in like the few weeks that I've been shadowing and then you know the, the week that I've been working um, so, you know, good stuff for you guys to kind of be aware of when going to the hospital as uh, a woman, okay? So uh, stay tuned for all of that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Follow me on Instagram at Adon the PA and on Instagram at Get That C University where we help you not only get into but through PA school through the use of consultation sessions, personal statement reviews, mock interviews, and then we do have the that has like all of these various different things like medical Spanish and things like that that you can learn uh, to help better yourself as a future provider. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.